The BBC presents June Turbin and Stephen Murray in a play by Philip Mackey, The Right Person. Jorgen? Jorgen, are you in the... Oh, not back yet. Hello, Porter? Yeah. Oh, hello. This is Mrs. Jorgensen. Can you tell me if my husband came back to the hotel this afternoon? Which is your room number, please? Room 308. You know the English Mrs. Jorgensen. It's such a common name in Copenhagen, isn't it? What, please? I said it's such a common name in Copenhagen. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. Well, has my husband been back? I've not seen him. Oh, it's just that we arranged to meet here, and I'm a bit late myself. But it's not important. It doesn't matter. Thank you. Manga tak. Hello, Jorgen. Oh, this is the hotel porter again. Oh, sorry. I thought it must be my husband. There's a Mr. Rasmussen here who wishes to see you. Rasmussen? I don't think I know him. Will you speak to him, please? Yes. Rasmussen. Oh, hello. I don't think we've met. No. If it's my husband you want, I'm afraid he's out at the moment. But are you quite sure you've got the right person? It is Jorgen Jorgensen. Yes, but, I mean, there are millions of Jorgensons and thousands of Jorgen Jorgensons. You're sure you haven't made a mistake? I do not think so. Well, if you can wait, he'll be back any moment now. I should prefer to see him privately, if possible. Well, I expect we'll be having a drink up here in the room, if you'd care to join us. He'll be here almost at once. You'll permit me to come to your room now? Yes, of course, if you'd like to. Thank you. I should like to. It's room 308, on the right, as you come out of the lift. Thank you. Oh, better tidy the room a bit. These parcels. Just pop them in the wardrobe for the time being. Now, drinks. Akvavit. And some glasses. That's right. Wonder who he can be, this Mr. Rasmussen. <gasps> Hope Jorgen won't be long. Coming! Mr. Rasmussen? Yes. Oh, do come in. Thank you. How well you speak English, but then everybody here seems to. I suppose you all learn it at school. Yes, we do. So you know my husband? I think so. From the old days? That's right. But I'm not quite sure if he's... Um... The right person? Yes. I wish to be sure. Of course. Won't you take your coat off? If you do not mind, I should like to keep it on. Oh, just as you like. Can I give you a drink? No, thank you. Aquavit? It's your national drink. You're very kind, but uh, no, thank you. Oh, well, do sit down. Thank you. Do you mind if I have a drink? I've had rather a heavy afternoon rushing around the shops. Oh, please. How did you know Jorgen was here? It was uh, simply an accident. I arrived at the hotel this morning. I do not live in Copenhagen now. I only come here on business. And when I signed the book, I saw the name, Jorgen Jorgensen. Skoll. Skoll. So I asked who was this Mr. Jorgensen, and they said it was a gentleman, about 40, who had come from England. Oh, that fits in with your person, does it? I mean, your man went to England. I'm not sure. I think perhaps he did. Jorgen is a British citizen now. Is that so? Mm, he's really completely anglicised. He's even talked about changing his name to John Johnson, but I wouldn't let him. I'd much rather be a Jorgensen. So you were a friend of his in the old days? No. No? We were not friends. I never knew him at all well. We were comrades at one time. Comrade means the same thing as friend. I think not exactly. Oh, in English, comrade is a word which... I the... do not want to mystify you. It is that we were in the resistance together during the German occupation. Oh, I see. We were in the same group. But in, in that sort of underground work, you do not know the other people very much. I saw him a few times, that was all. Oh, yes. Just enough to be able to recognize him again when I see him. Yes, Jorgen told me he'd been in the resistance. What did he tell you? Only that he'd been in the resistance. Here? In Copenhagen? He didn't say... And I didn't ask him. I thought probably he didn't want to talk about it. You're a very understanding wife. I hope so. I try to be. You've not been married very long. 
What makes you say that? You, you have the look of a young bride. <laughs> I suppose it does show, so I might as well admit it. I've been married exactly one week. Is this is your honeymoon trip. Yes. I'd always wanted to see Denmark because it was here Jorgen came from. And he hadn't been back for years and years. Not since war, I think. Only had some business to do here, so it all fitted in. And, of course, he would want to see his old friends and comrades. I thought so, but he doesn't seem to be having much success. His parents died some time ago, and he says that nearly all the people he used to know have moved away or gone abroad or something. Also, I suppose some of them are dead. Yes, I suppose so. We haven't really met anyone at all yet. Except me. Except you. But then you said you weren't, weren't a friend of his. No, not a friend. Then why do you want to meet him? I mean, is it just that you like to see him again after all these years, or is there some special reason? I want very much to see if I recognize him as the man that I knew. And will he recognize you? I think so. I've changed a great deal in the last years. Perhaps he has too. But I remember his face, and I expect he will remember mine. What happens when you recognize each other? I mean, do you and your old resistance group have reunion dinners like ex-service people do in England, where you all get wonderfully drunk and talk about the good old days and what fun it was in a way, <laughs> and how it's never really been the same since? There are such reunions, but not for my group. You don't enjoy that kind of thing? I should enjoy it very much, if it were possible. Then why not try and arrange something? I'm trying now. Oh, I see. And of course you want to invite Jorgen as well as the others. Mrs. Jorgensen, your husband and I will be a complete reunion in ourselves. Were there only two of you in the group? No. There were twelve of us. And you can't get hold of the other ten, or some of them anyway? The other ten are dead. All of them? Yes. Oh, what a shame. I'm sorry. Doesn't that sound an inadequate thing to say, but I am sorry. They died during the occupation. All at the same time? And all in the same place. And all in the same way. Shot? Yes. You and Jorgen were the only ones who escaped? Yes. He's never said a word to me about this. I did not suppose he would wish to talk about it. Oh, excuse me, won't you? If it is your husband, please do not tell him that I'm here. Why not? Please do not tell him that I'm here. But good heavens, why on earth not? Uh, hello. Jorgen here. Oh, hello, darling. Where have you been all this time? Oh, it dragged on for hours. I'll tell you about it later. Are you coming back now? Yes, as fast as I can. Good. I'll wait here for you in the room. And we've got... Why did you cut me off? I asked you please not to mention that I was here. Give me that telephone. Please, sit down. I want to know why you did that. Mrs. Jorgensen, sit down. I'm sorry I have to behave like this. Then why are you doing it? Mrs. Jorgensen, your husband will probably ring again in a moment's time. If he does so, when you answer the telephone, please do not mention that I'm here. Or that anyone is here. Or that anyone is here with you. What difference does it make whether I tell him or not? He's going to meet you in a few minutes I anyway. ask you. I shall do as I please. No. Look. But why? You may answer it, but remember. Hello? It's me again. Oh, we got cut off. Yes, you were in the middle of saying something. Was I? No, I, I, I don't think there was anything else. Ah, oh, all right, darling. See you soon. See you soon. Oh, Jorgen. Mrs. Jorgensen. What? Nothing. It doesn't matter. Bye, darling. Bye, darling. Thank you. Who are you? What are you? What kind of game is this? Probably there was no need for me to have taken that precaution. If you had said to him, Mr. Rasmussen is here to see you, I don't think it would have meant anything at all to him. In the resistance, you see, we all had different names. We never used our real names. I called myself Robbie. Jorgen Jorgensen was Thoralf. Who am I? What am I? In those days, I was Robbie, the leader of a little band of saboteurs, experts at 
throwing high explosive bombs and it's strangling men from behind. Now I am Hans Rasmussen, a very respectable businessman who owns a factory at Odense and comes to Copenhagen once a week on business. I'm a member of the town council of Odense. Next year I shall be mayor. If you had said Mr. Rasmussen from Odense, he would have laughed and said, who on earth is that? But you see, I wanted to be very careful. I did not want anything to happen that might make him suspicious, that might stop him from coming here. What would have happened if I'd said, Robbie of the Resistance is here? I'm sorry if I have to answer such a question. What would have happened? He would have turned and run to the other end of the earth. Why? Why? To save himself from being killed. Why? He was your comrade. He was in your group. He was the only other one who escaped. You mean... Was it... We were 12 men in the group. 11 were captured by the Gestapo. 10 were shot. I was the man who was captured but not shot. And Jürgen? I was pulled out of my bed in the middle of the night and taken to the shell house. It was the Gestapo headquarters then. There I was thrown into a room with 10 other people. My people. My group. And Jorgen? They looked at me and I looked at them. One by one, naming them to myself and counting them. Then I said, Toralf is not here. And they knew what that meant. Perhaps he'd escaped. They hadn't managed to catch him. Only we 12 knew who the 12 of us were. So if the whole group but one were taken, that could only mean that the traitor was that one. Perhaps he was captured too. They kept him separate for some reason or other. The only reason could be that he was giving them information. Why otherwise? We were all together there. How did you manage to survive? I was the leader. I was the one who knew about the people higher up. They kept me alive so that they could persevere with their efforts to make me talk. And then one day your air force came here and bombed the shell house so skillfully that we, the prisoners on the top floors, were not hurt. Some of us were able to jump out of the windows and make our escape. And you think it was Jürgen who betrayed you? I'm sure this was done by the man we called Toraf. I found out afterwards, after the war, that Toraf's real name was Jürgen Jorgensen. <sighs> Why am I getting excited and head up and scared to death by all this? You know better than I do. There are dozens of people called Jorgen Jorgensen. It's like being an Englishman called John Smith. Because it happens to be my husband's name, as well as the name of the, the person who betrayed you. You can't jump to the conclusion that my husband is that person. I do not jump to conclusions. Oh, this tall, of course, you remember what he looked like. I shall recognize his face. Well, it's quite clear to me. It's simply that you've got hold of the wrong man. Let us sit patiently and wait. Very soon we shall know for certain, one way or the other. Excuse me if I have another drink. You're bad for my nerves. I'm sorry. Are you sure you won't? Quite sure, thank you. I thought the Danes were fond of act with it. It is simply as I would rather not drink with you when it is possible that... It shall kill my husband. Yes. Well, I know you're not going to. Because I know it's not him. So, Skoll. Skoll. This man, this Torolf. Suppose the Gestapo caught him and tortured him. Suppose they forced him to tell who his comrades were. It may have happened. Oh, can't you understand that? Yes. But I cannot forgive it. Was he a man who might have broken down? It's difficult to say. But I thought him a man without much feeling, a hard and callous man. Why should he have betrayed you unless he was forced to by some unendurable... There's one possible reason. Toralf was the treasurer of our group. We had collected a lot of money secretly in banknotes we needed it for a big plan we had for buying things and bribing people. At the moment of our arrest, Toralf was holding all the money, about a hundred thousand kroner. 100,000? This is roughly 5,000 pounds. I don't believe a man could do such a thing for the sake of 5,000 pounds. In history, it has been done for less than that. 
But this is only perhaps. I do not know what happened. Perhaps he escaped with the money. Perhaps the Gestapo took it from him. Perhaps he hid it somewhere so that he could come back later and find it. Nothing but perhaps, perhaps. Nothing but theories and possibilities. You don't know anything for certain. This is right. There's only one thing certain, absolutely certain. All this has got nothing to do with my husband. Oh, don't you see? It couldn't possibly be him. I shall be very glad if it is not him. For your sake. When Jorgen comes, and you see he's not the man you want. I shall finish my business in Copenhagen. Tomorrow I shall return to my family. And everything will be as before. Let's wait for him to come in then. We'll all have a drink together. And five minutes of polite conversation about how Denmark is doing these days. You're so certain. Well, of course I am. I know him. I know it couldn't be him. You know the person you love. The man you get married Not to. Not always. Not completely. I know Jorgen. Then we can wait with confidence. And look at it reasonably. If it were Jorgen, why should he run the risk of coming back here without even changing his name? It's such a common name. There would still be the risk of meeting you. He would think that I died with the other ten men. Or of meeting someone else. By now, everyone else has forgotten. Why take any risks at all? I don't know. Perhaps he came back to find the money. Do you think my husband is, Tolf? Perhaps. Oh, but it's impossible. Jorgen, my Jorgen, he's a very brave man, very gallant. Doralf was brave. But he gave you away to the Germans. Jorgen couldn't have done that. When he got to England, he joined up in the Air Force. He went on bombing raids. This is quite possible. But his whole history is the history of a different kind of person. How much of it do you really know? Oh, I tell you, I know him. I know all about For him. For how long? How long have you known him? Well, only a year, but... Only a year. But I've been told so many things, not just by him, by people who knew him, people who served with him. They all admired him. Everyone did. He got a medal for saving one of his crew when their plane crashed, even though he himself was very bad. Why do you stop? You're going to say something. What was it? He was badly wounded in... in the arms and legs. He still walks with a limp. Is that what you are going to say? Oh, go away, go away. Forget you ever came here. Forget the whole thing. Go away now. Where should I go? Are you less certain? It's not him. It can't be him. I, I know, I know it can't. Then why do you ask me to go? It's for your own sake, don't you see? If you wait for my husband to come, you'll know immediately he's not the right person. But that's no good. It doesn't make any difference to your intention. My intention is evil. Don't you know it is? Yes. But I cannot help it. It's a kind of poison inside you. Perhaps. You're a man with a family, a home, a normal sort of life. Don't you want to go on like that? Yes. I do want to. Then give up your revenge while you still have the chance of your own accord. Not just because you didn't find the man you wanted to kill. You say this because you are afraid. No. You are afraid it might be your husband after all. No. I should go now. For my own sake. Yes. I think you are right. Go. Please go. But for your sake, I should stay. What do you mean? Could you bear to be married to a man for the rest of your life, knowing that perhaps, perhaps, he was a traitor and a murderer? I know he wasn't, I know. Are you so sure of this that no doubt can ever come into your mind now or five years from now or ten years from now? Are you so completely, perfectly sure? No, I'm not. And the poison would be in you. The poison of doubt, which would kill you. You cannot go on with your life unless you know the truth. Shall I go? He would tell me. Innocent or guilty, he would tell you the same thing. And you would not know whether to believe him. But if you kill him. Is he the man then? I don't know. Shall I go? You want to go on not knowing? If you say so, I shall go.
You want me to stay or go? Uh, I don't know. Mother, it's me. I would have asked you to stay. Hello, darling. I forgot to pick up the key at the desk, but I knew you'd be here. Sorry I have kept you waiting so long. Oh, I beg your pardon. I didn't know you had visited. Um, Jorgen, this is Mr. Rasmussen from Erdense. Uh, Mr. Rasmussen, my husband. Uh, how do you do? How do you do? I should explain why I've come here. Uh, did we know one another in the old days? Uh, you must forgive me so long since I've been in Denmark. I've forgotten a great number of names and faces. You do not know me. Oh, I'm afraid not. I had a comrade in the resistance who was called Jorgen Jorgensen. I'd wondered if perhaps you were him. I don't think so. I, I was in the resistance, of course. Here? In Copenhagen? Uh, no, in Helsinger. You're there all the time? Oh, yes, until I escaped to Sweden and then to England. Did your man go to England? Perhaps. I don't know. He simply disappeared. <laughs> but in any case, it's not of great importance. The important thing is, you are not the man I had been hoping to find. Oh, thank I'm God. I'm sorry, I apologize. It must be a great disappointment to you to come here and find the wrong person. Uh, no, I assure you, it is not a disappointment at all. Still, if you were looking for a man... I'm perfectly happy not to have found him. And now that I've failed to find him, I will thank you and say goodbye. Oh, don't go so quickly. Have a drink. Or has Martha given you one already? No, I... Uh, I only came here one minute before you arrived. You see, I didn't even have time to take off my coat. Do please take it off now. No, no, I must go. And you have uh, things to do. At least you'll have a quick drink with us. Very willingly. It's a long time since you were in Denmark? Oh, yes, I escaped quite early in the war. How does it feel to come back again? It feels wonderful. Iwa, darling. Thank you. Mr. Rasmus. Thank you. I drink to my own homecoming. Skull. 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 Now, if you'll excuse me, I shall not intrude any longer. I, I thank you for the drink and for your kindness in receiving me. Mrs. Jorgensen, now that I know your husband is not the man I was looking for, I say goodbye to you. Goodbye, Mr. Rasmussen. Goodbye, Mr. Jorgensen. Oh, goodbye. And thank you both very much. Please do not trouble to come down. Goodbye. Oh, oh nice chap. Yes. He'd only just arrived a few moments before I did. Yes, I was sitting here having a drink all by myself, waiting for my faithless husband to come home. Oh, darling. Oh, I suppose I had to be away so long. But uh, did you have a good time with your shopping? Oh, yes, I, I bought all kinds of things. I'll show you them in a minute. Silver salad spoon and fork and ashtrays and that lovely blue china and some books. Are you and, sure uh, you didn't overdo it? You, you look tired. No, no, I'm all right. You've got dark circles under your eyes. It was rather a hectic afternoon. Oh, poor darling. What do you feel like doing Shall we have dinner up here and go to bed early? No, let, let's go out somewhere. I'll be all right in a minute. And I'd like to go out. I want to celebrate. Oh, fine. I'll show you some more of Copenhagen. It's a lovely evening. We'll have dinner in the Tivoli Gardens. Uh, what particularly are you celebrating? Just that I... I got married to the right person. Ah, it was me who did that. Jorgen. What, darling? Jorgen, I've always wanted to ask you. Go ahead. When you crashed in your aircraft, mm, yeah. were you very badly burnt in the face? Oh. <laughs> Why do you ask that? Oh, it's just that I don't want to think you were ever any different from what you are now. You'll make me very conceited. No, <laughs> no, I wasn't burnt, only a very little, hardly at all. The scars have pretty well disappeared now. I'm so glad the war didn't spoil your beauty. And now let's go out somewhere for that celebration. I must clean myself up a bit first. 
We won't go to Tivoli, we'll go somewhere more expensive, somewhere very expensive. I'll think of a good place. Who are you throwing your money about? You should have asked me what I was doing this afternoon. Business, lawyers? It was the estate of my uncle who died. It's all settled now. And believe it or not, your husband is now rich by 100,000 kroner. 100,000? That's quite a lot of money, roughly 5,000 pounds. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, God. Now that we're rich, we can stay here longer if you like, or we can go somewhere else. What would you like to do? Somewhere else. What did you say, darling? Somewhere else. Somewhere else? Where shall we go, then? Where shall we go? Anywhere in the world, as far as I'm concerned, as long as we're together. That was The Right Person by Philip Mackey, with Stephen Murray as Rasmussen and June Tobin and Anthony Vickers as Martha and Jorgen Jorgensen. The play was produced for the BBC by R.D. Smith.